Hi, mystery readers. I'm Alexandra Amore. This is It's a Mystery Podcast, and I'm here today with Kelly Oliver. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Alexandra. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you so much for inviting me. Oh, you're so welcome. It's great to have you here. I'm excited to talk to you about your books because uh, they have a kick-ass sort of Western heroine, <laughs> which is close to my heart. So let me <laughs> let me introduce our listeners to you. Kelly Oliver's Jessica James Cowgirl Philosopher Mystery Series moves between the Chicago area and Western Montana. Wolf, which is the first book in the series, won the 2016 independently published book award gold medal for best mystery ebook and also was a forward award finalist for best mystery. When she's not writing Jessica James mystery novels, Kelly Oliver is a distinguished professor of philosophy at Vanderbilt University. Kelly lives in Nashville with her husband and her furry family, Hurricane Yukihu and Mayhem. Did I pronounce that second animal right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are three cats, although we recently lost Hurricane and now I have no. little mischief. Oh, okay. I just got a kitten, so it's Mayhem, Mischief, and Yuki Yu. <laughs> <laughs> what does uh, Yuki Yu mean? Yuki Yu is a Tahino Indian uh, god. It's uh, the indigenous people of Puerto Rico. Okay. My husband is from Puerto Rico. And Hurricane, or Uracan, is also one of their gods, and you can guess that Hurricane is the god of the hurricane, and Yukiyu is the god of the mountain that stops the hurricane. Now, actually, we named them wrong because Hurricane was totally mellow, and Yukiyu was really more of the force of nature, but <laughs> yes, those are uh, Uracan and Yukiyu. Oh, they're lovely names. That's great. Thanks for that. So let's talk about Jessica James. Um, she's a philosophy major, some, somewhat like yourself. She's 21. And the thing, one of the things that I found interesting about the series is that it's, it's, it goes back and forth sort of between city and country. So the first book, Wolf, starts out, or it's set in Chicago. So tell us a little bit about Jessica and about the origins of the series. Yeah, Jessica is from Montana. She grew up in Montana, and she goes to graduate school in Northwestern, where uh, all the people there are very posh, and her, the other people in the department are all these guys that came from Ivy League schools, and she's totally out of her element. So it's a fish-out-of-water situation, and she's constantly messing up. She's trying to do the right thing, but she constantly messes up and gets in trouble, which is what makes it fun. Uh, and then she goes back to Montana in the second book from Chicago, uh, from Northwestern. And again, she's out of her element because everyone thinks she's really strange and almost like an alien coming back. She dresses in vintage dresses with red cowboy boots and she doesn't fit in either back in Montana or in graduate school. She's kind of in between these worlds. So a lot of, and she's she's in her 20s, so a lot of it is Jessica trying to figure out who she is, where she belongs, and also coming to terms with really very male-dominated worlds. So in Montana, she was involved in the rodeo world. She was a barrel racer, uh, but again, very male-dominated rodeo and then she goes to philosophy graduate school where it's all men all the teachers are men the professors her peers are all these guys and so she's really got to be tough just to get by and and is confused too by some of the things that happen doesn't know how to interpret some of the things that are happening to her there because she is one of the only women there and I imagine that you must draw on your experience in a philosophy department <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Yes, yes, yes. The the first the first book is uh, a lot of it is autobiographical. Only I have to say I did not murder my dissertation director, awesome. although I maybe I wanted to, which is I think what inspired me to start writing. I I went to therapy after graduate school, <laughs> and writing fiction is maybe is cheaper than therapy, but it, I think it's a lot more effective. And also I got to kill him off in the book, even if I couldn't kill him in real life. So. Uh, yeah, a lot of it is based on my own experiences uh, being a woman in a very male-dominated discipline and trying to find your way and uh, 
and also the funny world of philosophy. So I guess for me, it, it has become a form of therapy by making it funny, turning, turning some of these experiences that, that really, when I was going through them, were very hard and, and not funny, and it was hard to, to figure out what was going on, uh, what I could do, and being told I was stupid and not really wanting to buy that, uh, <laughs> that explanation of what was going on. So I am creating Jessica. I mean, she's way more kick-ass than I was. She she gives as good as she gets, and it's fun to to take a sort of revenge through fiction, I guess, and and through Jessica, who gets the better of these guys, um, and and is better at figuring out what's going on than than I ever was, and and doing it. And so for me. Humor is a really important important part of the novels. Uh, I just I love reading funny mysteries too, and my mysteries are kind of edgy cozy, so they're there there's not a lot of graphic violence and there's no sex. There's some swearing and a little bit of drug use, uh, <laughs> but uh, otherwise they're they're quirky characters and they are funny, which is the kind of thing that I like to read myself. And, and it also has helped me, you know, as I said, it's helped me yeah. deal with some of these hard experiences by finding the humor in these situations. Yeah, it does sound like fantastic therapy to me. Um, <laughs> yeah, so well done you. And you mentioned the quirky characters. So um, Jessica has a little bit of a posse. Uh, she has Jack and Lolita. Tell us a little bit about them. <laughs> Yeah, Jack is kind of a nerdy, uh, but kind of cool, nerdy uh, character who is a uh, 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 um, psychiatrist. He's studying to be a psychiatrist, so he's doing forensic psychiatry in medical school. So he's, he's a med student, but he's especially studying criminal uh, forensic psychology. So he's he's also interested in philosophy, but he's got... He, he's 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 really uh, fascinated by the criminal mind, not so much because he wants to bust the bad guy or the criminal, but but he almost is sort of edging that way in himself. He's on the edge of of a very sympathizing with the the abnormal psychology, I guess. Uh, and he's kind of a stoner character. That's where the drugs come in. Oh. <laughs> and he he he's. He's super smart, but also uh, knows that he's smart, and so he can be quite annoying that way. Mm. And we find out in the third book, Fox. You, you see it in 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 Wolf developing, but you it really becomes explicit in Fox that he's got a crush on Jessica. He's a bit of a womanizer, but he's got a total crush on Jessica, and she's clueless. She has no idea that her best friend has a crush on her. And then Lolita is just a total badass. Her her dad is uh, escaped Russia. He's now the janitor at the philosophy department. Mm. But because he escaped uh, Russia, getting away from the family business, which was very dangerous for him, and he's in hiding. So he's, he's, he's laying low, uh, and Lolita is paying her way through this posh school by running kind of semi legal semi illegal poker games very high stakes poker games in chicago so she she knows how to work men and how to get money out of them and she she really can take care of herself she also uh practices karate and she's totally no nonsense so a lot of times she ends up getting jessica out of trouble so that they're really a, a dynamic duo jessica and lolita Oh, nice. So oh, I love hearing that. And one of the things as a writer that I wanted to ask you was the first book is set in Chicago. Jack and Lolita are there uh, with Jessica uh, in the at the university. And then the second book, Coyote, is set or Coyote. I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, <laughs> I tend to go back and forth um, yeah. is set in Whitefish, Montana, where Jessica grew up. And so so Jack and Lolita aren't there essentially with her in the second book. So what was that like for you? Did you have to create another cast of characters or other sidekick type characters for her there? Yeah, Lolita ends up being a very important part of Coyote, Coyote too. She makes a road trip on her Harley out to Montana to visit Jessica. 
but I introduced new characters. So Kimmy Red Fox, who is from the Blackfeet Reservation, is one of the main characters. And a lot of the mystery and the crime situation revolve around Kimmy trying to find her younger sisters who have been uh, lured into drugs and human trafficking around the fracking on the Blackfeet Reservation. Mm. So a lot of it takes place on the Blackfeet Reservation and the edge of Glacier Park. So Jessica's gone home. She's gone out to work at Glacier Park to earn enough money to buy whiskey and books, basically. <laughs> uh, and her bunkmate is Kimmy Red Fox. So she gets drawn into Kimmy's drama and then Lolita comes out and, and there's the posse again. I mean, for me, in all of the books, I have strong women. Lolita and Jessica work as a team in every single book. So Lolita okay. is going to be there. Um, and, and one of the things that is important to me is, ha is to have a group of, of women friends, of female friends, not to just have one lone uh, kick-ass girl who is out there fighting the bad guys, but... For me, these women need each other. They complement each other. They have strengths and weaknesses, and they have to work together. And it's by working together and female friendship and relying on each other and having each other's backs that they get through these difficult situations and they overcome you know, the bad guys in the end. So that's a kind of, I guess, feminist undertone that is important to me. Also, they're taking up, each of the novels takes up uh, a, a kind of rip from the headlines social issue that involves women. So in the the first novel, you get the you know harass sexual harassment, which oh my gosh is all over the news now. Yeah, and wow. Camp campus rape is a sub theme in the because it's set on on campus, and of course the Lolita and Jessica totally kick the frat boy rapist asses, which is very satisfying. Yes. Uh, and then Coyote takes up the issue of human trafficking. And in Fox, you get into issues of reproductive technologies and kind of this very hidden world, which is it's true. It's a really hidden world of, of some of the new reproductive technologies, especially involving egg donation. You hear more about sperm donation, but women who use egg donation usually keep it very secret. So you enter there a different kind of world, this high society uh, women who are using uh, in vitro fertilization and egg donation. So, uh, but again, women's issues and, and these strong women characters taking on. So each novel is, has Lolita. Jack is back in, in Fox and it, it becomes a main character. He's a kind of a side character in Wolf and he becomes a main character with his own voice and a point of view in Fox and that's when you, we learn that he has this crush on Jessica and there's this kind of unrequited romance and it becomes actually more of a romantic suspense. The first one is, well actually all of them have, have romance, have, have the element of romance in them, but I think that probably Fox is, has the most satisfying balance of romance and suspense. And then there's a fourth book, Jackal, which is coming out in the spring of 2018. And that one's set in Las Vegas, so another new location. So can you tell us a little <laughs> bit? Tell us a little bit about that one. That's right. Uh, Jessica ends up going to Las Vegas based on a photograph that her mother has had an accident. Uh, it's unclear whether she'll be paralyzed for life, if she's mm -hmm. even going to survive, and she sends Jessica on this mission that Jessica is very resistant to go on, uh, claiming that some guy in the photograph is her father, but Jessica is like, that is definitely not my father. And so Jessica, kind of like her mother's dying wish, her, her mother is not gonna die, but uh, <laughs> she, her mother is quite a character uh, throughout all the novels, we, especially in the second one, you get to know her a lot better. Um, but anyway, she ends up going to Las Vegas in search of this guy. And so she meets some of the same, or she meets some new characters, and of course Lolita is going to come and be an important part of that. But there's there's some new, again, quirky, fun characters involved in the Las Vegas scene, and that's going to take up again some women's issues of prostitution and uh, strip clubs, exotic dancers, and their world, mm. and some of the, you know, issues that they face. So. 
there, there's a fun character uh, that was one of her high school friends that, that now she thought was dancing for Cirque du Soleil. That's what everyone's like, oh, she made it big in Las Vegas. And it turns out she's dancing at a strip club. But oh, no. um, <laughs> when Jessica goes to visit her, she f- finds out that really uh, she's she's not what she seems. She's, mm. uh, yeah. And, and so you've mentioned that each book has sort of a contemporary or yeah, I guess I would say contemporary issue involved in the plot. So did that idea come first that you wanted to explore these issues or was it the characters that came first to, for you? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I think that I was committed to exploring women's issues uh, and it just issues that are important to me so that the books would have have some kind of a social impact. And I think that comes from so many years being a nonfiction writer. I've written a lot of nonfiction <clears throat> books that have taken up some of these same issues, actually, only you know in, in nonfiction. And so because of my research there, I thought, well, first of all, I could use the research. I've already done the research, so I've got the background. But also, because I've done that research, those issues are really important to me. So I wanted to be able to engage with them in a totally new way that would be also entertaining and fun and funny and maybe reach new audience and new readers. So it sounds like the the issues that were important to you, the things that you had written about in academic papers and that kind of thing sort of came first and then you built out the characters from there, would you say? Yes, yeah, because I'd been doing the research in the nonfiction books and then, as I said, the Jessica is based on a lot of my own experiences, so it was a combination because I'd wanted to write fiction for a long time. I just was afraid to try it. And I had this story to tell from my graduate school day. So there was, you know, that autobiographical element, but then also these issues that I've been working on for a long time now, women, different women's issues were important to me. So I, I definitely wanted to bring those in too. Mm-hmm. And as I said, I wanted to do it in, in a way that was entertaining and fun and page turning So not a heavy handed way, because in the nonfiction, you know, you just get right to the point and some, you know, it's not boring or it turns people off or they they don't want to hear about those issues. But when you do it in fun way in fiction, then they may start thinking about things or, you know, realize things they hadn't realized before, but not feel like, you know, they're they're reading something heavy. Yes. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. I saw in the description of Wolf, actually, and you've mentioned it already on the interview that the book is for everyone who's ever wanted to murder the wolf in their life. And (laughs) it reminded me of um, Sue Grafton and A for Alibi. And she she wrote that because she was in a terrible marriage. I think this is how the story goes. A terrible marriage at the time. And she actually found herself one day wondering um, it had something to do with plants in her garden. You know, if the plant, if, if there would, would be a plant in her garden that she could use to murder her spouse. And so instead she wrote A is for alibi and then has taken it from there and is almost at uh, Z, as we say in Canada or Z by now. Um, so I love hearing that, that you've taken, the, you know, these things in your life that were important to you and, and turned them into to art in a way, you know, into fiction. Right, which is better to, than going to prison. So <laughs> that's right. Yes. So yeah, instead it's a of legal, it's a legal way to to murder people. Exactly, and you've created something, and you're giving other people pleasure. Yeah, as you say, rather than going to prison for the rest of your life. So, <laughs> right. so that's right. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, um, and it does. Yeah, I think it really helps to deal with these things. You, for me, using humor and and also, also fiction. Mm-hmm. And writing, you know, writing has just always been really important to me. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I live to write. It gives my life a lot of meaning. And now fiction writing is just, it's so much more fun than the nonfiction writing, too. Yes. Just the characters, you know, the way that the characters come alive and speak to you. And also, for me, a challenge of trying to get into the head of people that I might disagree with and really yeah. see from their perspective. Uh, an issue, even though it's not my perspective, but actually trying to do that in a sympathetic way has really been eye-opening for me too. And I I think, you know, helping me grow as a person and as a writer. Mm -hmm. And then do you not find that, I mean, if you're writing um, in your academic job, uh, do you, do you find it refreshing then to write in a different way uh, for these novels? 
Oh, yeah. I, I really, it's a lot of fun and it's a great break from writing the nonfiction. I, one thing that was funny, though, is that I, when I would write the nonfiction, I have a certain routine with my tea and I stand up to write and very disciplined. And when I started writing fiction, I'm in a lounge chair eating cookies and drinking Coke. And, <laughs> and I'm like, OK, there's something for me very transgressive about writing fiction. Uh, that comes out also in the habits of, in a way, I wasn't very good for my health, but yeah, it was really fun. <laughs> Since then, I'm trying to wean myself off the cookies and Coke and still be able to write, but now I do all my writing in a lounge chair. So it, it's changed. It's, uh, it's, it's changed also the way I think about writing nonfiction. Oh. Because when you, when you write nonfiction, you know, you just get right to the point. And I wasn't thinking so much about, oh, you've got to keep people turning the page. You've got to keep people turning the page. Whereas when you're writing fiction, you know, you, you've got to think, especially mystery or suspense, but I think any fiction, you know, you, you've got to keep people interested either in the character, the story, to want to turn the page or the writing. And now it's made me think more about that in my nonfiction, how por important it is really to keep the audience engaged, not just you know, tell them something, but really keep them engaged. So, oh, isn't that interesting? Hopefully it's made, making me a better writer, yeah. no matter what I write. Yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, fascinating. Wow, that's really interesting. So we touched on uh, Jackal that's coming out in the spring of next year. And um, are you still working on that? Is it completed and ready to go? What's what's going on there? I'm still, I'm still working on it. Uh, yeah, I've got... I've got a bit more to write, so it's about a third done. I, yeah, I some had some. My mother passed away in mm. the spring, so that yeah, I haven't really gotten back to it since then. But my plan is to yep get it finished off. So hopefully soon. Yes, yeah. Oh, I'm very sorry about the loss of your mother. My mother passed away it, this year as well. So I understand. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a hard time. It is momentous. Yeah, really. Yeah, life changing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Condolences to you. Oh, too. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and do you have plans to continue the series after that, after the fourth book? I'll have to see. You know, I want to see if people are enjoying the series, then I would love to continue it. I love spending time with Jessica and Lolita and creating all kinds of other oddball characters. And I have lots of other ideas. And, and if Jessica ever gets her PhD and becomes a professor, you know, there's a lot that she could do and traveling um, and having fellowships mm. and things happening, who knows where. Mm -hmm. So it could be a lot of fun, but I kind of want to wait and see if people are responding. You mentioned, it, I, I've been excited that each of the three books that's out has been either a finalist or won different awards. So if I keep getting positive feedback and people like the Jessica James series, I would love to keep writing the Jessica James series. What I'd really like to do is retire from my day job so that mm -hmm. I could do fiction full time and maybe start another series too, yep. or maybe even try a little bit different kind of writing outside of the mystery mystery writing so I, I'd love to experiment more maybe or maybe a historical more of a historical mystery mm -hmm. I would like at some point to do a more historical novel whether it's historical mystery or historical romance but or, or just some you know some kind of historical mystery or, or historical novel mm -hmm. uh, so I'm hoping that I can find the time or make the time to continue with Jessica but start also uh, some other fiction writing projects. Nice. Oh, that's great. Well, we'll have to keep tabs on that. And, and if, you do, <laughs> if you do write a historical mystery, we'll have you back on the show so you can talk about that. Yeah, I'd love that, <laughs> Alexandra. Oh, That'd that be would fun. be great. Well, this has been awesome, Kelly. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. Why don't you let our listeners know where they can find out more about you and your books? Great. You can find out more about you can find out more about me and my books at my website, which is www.kellyoliverbooks.com. The book should be available wherever books are sold, either as ebook or as paperback books. Great. And also, they're they're coming out as audiobooks soon too. Oh, so that's fantastic! Exciting. Oh, that's yeah. very exciting! Wow, that's great. Did you do that through ACX? Yes. Good yeah. for you. That's awesome. All right. Well, this yeah. has been amazing, Kelly. Thank you so much for chatting with me today. Thank you. I enjoyed Ta it. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.